Now, sex trafficking lately surfaced as a topic of discussion in Nigeria as lawmakers tasked the federal government to take action against, uh, to bring an end to this degrading, the degrading acts of trafficking of Nigerian women for sex, usually perpetrated by human traffickers within Africa and abroad. According to available data, sex trafficking of Nigerian women abroad is on the increase and it is the third most common crime in Nigeria after drug trafficking and economic fraud, UNESCO says. And the total number of human trafficking victims outside of Nigeria is largely unknown. As Nigerian authority and relevant agencies grapples with this sad reality, one man, a photographer, outside the shores of Nigeria, Angus Thomas, is sending back trapped Nigerian women tricked to sex trafficking in Dubai on his own accord. He joins us now from London, UK, to share why he chose that path of kindness. Thank you for joining us, Angus. First of all, you have been involved in sending back Nigerian ladies trapped in Dubai, people you have no connection whatsoever with. Why are you doing this? Will be our first uh, yeah, question. that's a good question. I mean, up until uh, December, I'd only ever met one Nigerian in my life, and I'm 57 now. So, uh, but interestingly enough, uh, it seems to me the last over the last couple of months, all my friends are Nigerian. So, um, I, I think the uh, the reason I felt compelled to get involved is that when the first girl uh, that we rescued propositioned me, she she took my arm. And uh, all I can say is that even though it was a hot evening in Dubai, um, you know, her, her grasp, if you can call it that, uh, her, her limp grasp uh, was sort of cold and clammy. Uh, she was very thin. She was very defeated. Um, she was very tired. And uh, subsequently, when I got talking to her, all she could say was, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. I want to go home. And, uh, you know, she had been living on this constant treadmill of uh, having to pay off this imaginary debt by uh, sleeping with, uh, you know, lots of men uh, in the, that she was picking up on the, on the streets and in the clubs of Dubai. Um, and, uh, you know, I just felt, you know, when you discover somebody's in need, I just can't walk past. I'm a, I'm a photographer. I'm always chasing a story. Uh, and, um, you know, this was a very real human interest story. And there was somebody I could help here with um, with actually relatively little money. I mean, it was a lot of money, but in, in the scheme of someone's life, it was, you know, very little money. And uh, it was a great joy to see her repatriated. And uh, now with the help of NapTip, she uh, and we've supported her financially as well. Um, you know, she's now uh, retraining and NapTip are helping her to set up in her own business. So, um, you know, it was very important uh, for, for me personally. I've got daughters her age and um, that could be any one of us, you know, but for the place that we were uh, we grew up in and the privileges we enjoy. So um, for me, it was it was a way of giving something back and and just helping another human being. So, but it's become a you know an obsession. I'm afraid I I know of at least uh, well I'm in contact with at least four other women who are um, stuck in Dubai. I know of three flats. I know of there's probably another. Uh, you know, 16 girls uh, that we can help. And I just felt compelled, you know, I'm I, armed with this information. What what would I do? Go back to my life normally and not worry about them? No, I, I can't do that. You know, I, I need to keep going and until I can do no more. So uh, for me, it's uh, it's become a mission. You have also launched a website with funds for friends and supporters to help distract girls in Dubai. What are the challenges you have faced uh, so far? So yes, when I got home from um, Dubai, I set up a GoFundMe campaign um, and um, we uh, raised about uh, £3,000 um, from that. And then the BBC picked up our story. We, we got the total up to £10,000. Um, I was intending to go back to Dubai almost immediately, but because of the success of the campaign and the media coverage we've had, um, including yourselves, obviously, um, uh, it, it, we need to seek clarification from the authorities in Dubai who are very strict about acts of charity and volunteering in their country. So we are uh, in discussion with the embassy in London to clarify our status as to whether it's safe to go back and whether they would give us permission. Um, there's also a women's shelter in um, in Dubai uh, who are very responsive. Um, it did take them 
10 days or something to come back to initial inquiry. But actually the most disappointing side, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you uh, because I've become a big Nigerian fan, but the, uh, uh, the, 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 the side that's not pulling their weight in my view is the Nigerian side. The, the, uh, Nigeria has a consulate in, um, uh, in Dubai and uh, I've had absolutely no response from them. I, I've created a website at sendthemhome dot ae dot org uh, so that uh, women Nigerian women who are trapped in Dubai uh, can apply for funds to come home from us uh, we sought clarification from the Nigerian consulate um, as to how they should go about the process of obtaining an emergency travel order because these girls a lot of them have had their passports removed we've had no reply to that um, and in fact, uh, laughingly, the one reply we did get to one of our emails was actually finished off with a cross, which which seemed like a kiss or a, or a typo. I don't know. Um, and again, this morning, I had, I've sent two emails to the Edo State Task Force. Two emails. Both of them have been returned. Two different uh, email addresses. Both of them have been returned as not being active email accounts. So this has been the story throughout our contact with... Um, uh, with organisations in Nigeria. Having said that, there have been um, two or three organisations that have been very proactive. One is NAPTIP, uh, who have been absolutely fantastic. They've got three people in custody uh, at the moment, with more to come. The case officer in Benin has been couldn't have been more helpful. We communicate uh, probably every couple of days because I'm uh, currently supporting financially both girls that we've returned, uh, and you know we're able to encourage the girls to uh, act as witnesses in the NAPTIP case. And the other one is uh, Edia Renaissance. Um, again, uh, you know they've been very good at, in supporting uh, us and giving us information. So, um, so really uh, on the Nigerian side, they could do better. And it's interesting uh, to find you filling the gap that our government or embassies, if you like, in such countries are supposed to be responsible for. What have you found out as the main reasons these girls end up in Dubai? So, yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, you know, I, I had, n had no contact uh, with a Nigerian uh, in my entire life, and that's 57 years of it. Uh, now, every day is filled with conversations with Nigerians. Um, the problem, I think, for the girls that we've dealt with so far is that they were tricked. So they're seeking a better life for themselves. They're seeking, you know, seeking excitement. They're seeking money, um, and uh, you know, they answer an advert, or they're they're coerced, or they're introduced to a, a friend of a friend of a friend, uh, and uh, they end up arriving in Dubai in you know their best clothes with their best handbags um and um you know expecting to go into a lucrative sales job and they end up in a squalid apartment full of you know five to 20 other women um and they're put straight to work in the clubs and uh, told that until they you know pay back this imaginary debt of ten thousand uh, dollars that they're not going home um, and even then, there's no evidence to suggest that they do go home. So um, I, I think the reasons uh, why people are, are, are seem to be trafficked to Dubai are, you know, to do with um, family greed. Uh, you know, the daughters being put out there to work, uh, family pride that maybe one of the daughters is working abroad and that brings some kudos to the family um, and, uh, you know, general ignorance and um it's it's a real shame, and I think for those girls coming back from Dubai, you know, if you've grown up in rural Edo State, uh, and you suddenly go to Dubai and you see that you can sleep with somebody for fifty dollars, uh, and you see this unbelievable wealth that there is in the, in Dubai, uh, you know, you're you could be tempted to stay no matter what the conditions. And in fact, I'm in touch regularly. I mean, every two days with one girl who has paid off twenty thousand dollars, so that means she. She's slept with 400 clients um, and she is not coming home until she's earned $5,000 to support her brothers in, in, um, in Lagos. I can't make a moral judgment on that because I, you know, I, comparatively speaking, I live a very privileged life, um, and uh, I, you know, I completely respect the fact that she's still staying there to work and and come back, but. I, I worry for her that she'll never get away, but I worry even more that if she is picked up by the police um, in the UAE, then, um, you know, she could be in for a very tricky time in a 
uh, in a, uh, a Dubai prison, which is not a good place to be. I mean, there are people languishing in prison in Dubai for the most petty offences. Uh, they're very strict on, uh, for example, uh, people uh, being intimate with people who are not their wives. So there's a man in prison for uh, slapping another man's um, backside as a joke. So that that you know gives you some idea of uh, of of the. Um, uh, of the 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 level of um, policing that goes on uh, in Dubai, so they're you know they're very strict with that. So, so we set up a web page at um, sendthemhome.ae.org, and this is primarily as a resource for uh, Nigerian women that have been trafficked uh, to Dubai. Obviously, the vast majority of Nigerian women are trafficked north to uh, to Europe, um, but uh, so Dubai is a kind of forgotten forgotten corner of the Nigerian world, if you like. So, um, And given that the consulate in uh, Dubai, the Nigerian consulate, is just so inaccessible, their website is broken, they've even got the wrong telephone number for the consulate on their own website. So um, so we felt like we had to um, build something that was uh, being indexed by Google, and I'm hoping that all of the uh, NGOs and charities connected with sex trafficking in Nigeria will use this as a resource and uh, distribute the information to the women who need our help.